So recently, my girl's been on this like early 2000s kick for TV. Like she's been watching um, Fresh Prince. We've been watching the Parkers. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I have to get her every time on that. I, I don't know whose fucking choice that was for that to be the opening. Like, hmm, all right, we got a fun show here. It's going to be a comedy sitcom. What's going to get people into the mood for laughing? Oh, I don't know. How about... Ah! She literally turns down the audio when she's watching that in the background just because she knows it's coming, and I always hear it. Ah! Anyway, early 2000s TV. Oh, yeah. So, a show I didn't think I would like, that I thought, eh, I get it, before I even watched it, but I actually enjoy, Wife Swap. I wanted to kind of start it off with a little song. Peace to you. Peace in your home peace. now i'm not much for reality tv like the most i watch for reality tv would be like um 90 day fiance oh holy shit that show if you ever want to see just just an extended train wreck just just watch those relationships i mean some of them are all right some people you know they have an understanding you know they're both doing the right thing and sometimes it's just a fucking mess just anything with, uh, oh god, who's the guy who can't run right? He, he does this, like, waddle penguin run. Like, anytime there's, like, an issue, she's like, we need to work through this. He's like, I'm out of here. And he, he, he just waddles his ass up a hill or something. <laughs> he just left her. Oh my god, I'm getting so sidetracked. Anyway, I don't watch much reality TV. Right? And I think a lot of reality TV is bullshit. Like, when you watch, like, 90 Day Fiance... You split it into thirds, all right? You split every episode into thirds. The first third is recapping all the shit you saw on the last episode. The middle third is actual new content for the episode, and the last third is teasing what's to come. So, like, out of an hour, 90-minute episode, you maybe get, like, 20, 30 minutes of actual, like, this is new shit you haven't seen before. And then everything else is just stuff taken out of context that when you watch later goes, oh, okay, it's not as bad as it seemed. Now... Wife Swap. This is back when, like, reality TV was, like, still catching on and it wasn't, like, actors and shit like that. You can tell these are real people. And there was actually a goal in mind. Because right now it's like, you take a couple freaks, you put them in a fishbowl, and then you poke it and go, ah, what a bunch of assholes, I'm so much better than you. But back then it's like people tried to learn something from this. Like, a whole thing with Wife Swap is you take two different families who have two extreme views on opposite ends, then you swap the moms. And shit just goes off the rails. And what you gotta look out for in these shows is the family who thinks they know best. They are always the ones who fucking lose the game, in my opinion, because it's a game. Look, you know it's gonna be two weeks, right? You show up to the house, you sign up for the game, you're like, alright, I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna live their lives, and then for a week, they're gonna try it my way. Some people don't get that shit. Some people go into it and they're like, oh, well, you're just entirely wrong, and I can't wait to set you straight because I know what's best. Ugh. <laughs> and it usually winds up with just hilarious results. Like, um, one episode that stood out to me. They, uh, did a reversal. They swapped the husbands. They swapped the husbands. They took a biker dad and put him with a hippie commune. And then they took this, uh, stepfather music teacher looking guy and put him with the motorcycle family. And holy shit. Did the motorcycle guy fucking rock. <laughs> he understood the game he did a little bit of bitching in the beginning, but not to anybody. He still did the work. You know, he's over there, he's shoveling compost in a heap. He didn't understand it, but he knew it was the job. He knew what he was there for. On the other hand, Mr. Open and Sensitivity constantly judged the other family the entire time he was there. He's like, your house smells like cat piss. I don't understand. Like, maybe you don't smell it because you live in filth, but I can smell the filth. And <laughs> the, 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 the motorcycle, the biker wife... She's a, she's a classic. She's a great woman. He sits there. He gives this whole spiel about how he knows better. And the daughters are all pissed off. And she just sits there, takes a drag from her cigarette. And she's like, son, you got yourself 500 pounds of pissed off female now. You're a dead man. Anything else? Over 500 pounds of pissed off female, bud. I don't think you know what you're doing. <laughs> that is a woman right there. 
But yeah, in the meantime, you know, he thinks he's trying to break through to them and get them to change their ways. Meanwhile, the father figure they're missing is over there, and he's doing an amazing job. He's hanging out with the girls. He's, he's taking them on, like, this teacup ride and shit, showing them fun, getting them off the commune. Even the guy's wife, who when you first see her, you know, she's like this flower child. You know, she's never left the commune. She's out there dressed in leather. She's serving drinks at the bar, having a great time. You know, it's like he really made an impression. He reminded them that there's more to life than just structure. You can have fun. You can live it. Of course, Mr. Hooper ain't learning shit. You got hippie hands, Mr. Hooper. Been shoveling compost all your life. I don't need this working class hero crap. Who, by the way, whoever edits these shows is a fucking genius. He, he gets the best moments. Shane, I think Shane's really looking to me as a role model. He's hot. Anyway, my girl likes to watch her shows in order. God forbid we lose track of the overarching plot of Wife Swap, but in one special case, she decided to skip three seasons ahead to look at one particular episode. Piqued my interest. So, seems like a standard episode at first. You know, you got the uptight family, and you got the family that's got, you know, like, no discipline, nothing like that. So, the uptight family... They run, like, a family bluegrass band. Like, if you ever walk into, like, a grocery store and you see those animatronics fucking playing the banjo and shit, that was their family. We're taking down the Zog machine, two by two by two. The white man marches on! And basically, they had a system over there based on tokens. And by behaving well, by completing certain tasks, you can achieve certain tokens, and you'd use those tokens to pay for fun. Except in this house, there's no TV, there's no video games, and there's certainly no girls around. Because why would you want your young boys to have any experience with women before you send them out in the world? You know? This is what I'm saying to my girl. It's like, I don't understand households like this. Like, you keep your kid in there, you shelter him from everything, and then you send him out there. No mistakes, no having learned how the real world works. You, you're creating a psycho. You know, you're creating a psycho. My girl leans over and says, funny you should say that. <laughs> As it turns out, the band had a falling out. Apparently, one of the sons murdered his mother and brother with a shotgun. Jesus. You can imagine I'm hearing that watching the episode. I was blown away. Because now watching the episode, it isn't lighthearted. No, look at these silly gooses. Now you're looking for clues. All right? You're looking for red flags. That one's dead. That one's a little bit not dead. Like, where did this go off the rails? Are you telling me that only allowing these kids to have fun via pushing a hoop with a stick down a dirt road could possibly backfire? I don't know. I don't mean to speak ill of the dead here, but... When that mom from the Bluegrass family went over to the other household, she never gave it a chance. The entire time, she stood there hands on hips and just shook her head at everything like, oh, this certainly won't do. I would never do this in my house. You never know how these kids are going to turn out. And, you know, the way the game is played is you got to meet everybody halfway. If you're not willing to meet anybody halfway, then you're an asshole. You gain nothing from the experience, right? And I'm sure the father on this side was willing to make concessions had he not been paired up with somebody who is so unwilling to listen to other trains of thought. Like, this dad, something happened with him. And the other woman wouldn't hear none of that shit. It was all about how they need to get jobs, how they need to quit smoking, no more rap music. You know, just textbook, fuddy-duddy stuff. Right? And I guess that's what eventually led to it. Because, I see, I think the root of all the psycho killers out there is just a complete and utter lack of sex. I, I swear to God, so many, so many catastrophes could be averted with a simple blowjob. And I, I mean that. I, I believe that in my heart of hearts. Because all these dudes, every time they talk about him, it's like, oh, I, were there any signs? It's like, well, you know, he always complained about never having a girlfriend. Like, he never got out there. Like, y it's hard to be with a girl and, like, still feel the need to go out there and shoot up the mall. You know what I'm saying? Like, some part of you is being satisfied, like, a natural urge is being satisfied, where you don't have to substitute that with a fucking AR-15 and a gas mask. In fact, later on in the episode, they get a date. They go out to a local diner, just sit down with some nice ladies, and they have some conversation. And you know what? That kid had the biggest goddamn smile I've ever seen. 
Because that's all it takes. That's all it takes to push down all the other shit. Is you just need to get out there and meet some girls. It's very simple, but for some reason, no, we just couldn't do that in that household. I can understand that making somebody go crazy. Not that I condone any of these fucking actions, of course. I'm not a fucking psycho. I'm just saying I, I see where it builds from. Where your, your entire life is like, you gotta save up tokens so I can get joy, but only the measured amount of joy because I don't want to offend. Like, that will drive a person fucking crazy every time. Alright, that's how you get your psycho killers. But don't worry, because even on death row, even after you've murdered your family and you're still on death row, I guarantee you there will still be some woman out there ready to marry you. I, I don't know where this comes from. Every documentary I watch about a serial killer, you know, Son of Sam, Ted Bundy, they always have groupies. What is that life? Like, how narrow, how shallow is the dating pool in your town where you're like, fuck, man, it's either the cats or it's the killer, right? And they always justify it the same way. They're like, oh, well, you know, there's a difference between what the public hears about him and I see a different man on the inside. And all I'm thinking is, bitch, he wants to rip out your insides. Why would you... I mean, sweetheart, the last girl that was in your shoes got turned into a lampshade. This is a clear swipe left scenario. Buy some Meow Mix, you're gonna be fine.